Kumusta na mga pamangkin, mga kapatid? It's been a while that we have been doing many studies at maraming mga tanong tungkol sa prayer. Bakit daw ang dami-dami mga prayer parang hindi naman nasasagot? So yung mga tao, pray na lang ng pray na parang baka sakali, sagutin, baka naman magkataong masagot-sagot pero hindi sila sure. Bakit nga ba parang may mga prayers that are unanswered? O may answer naman talaga, hindi lang natin naintindihan ko ano yung answer. Ang pag-aaral natin ngayon, pinamagata natin, believe that you have received it. Paniwalaan mong natanggap mo na. Mark 11.24 Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Babalikan natin ang mahiwagang verse na yan. The way to answer prayer according to Jesus is first, believe. Believe that you have already received what you are going to just ask for. Then next, ask. And then after that, that's when you receive. What does this mean? How does? How can this happen? Suriin natin ang Mark 11, 12-14. Kinabukasan, nang pabalik na sila mula sa Betanya, si Jesus ay nakaramdam ng gutom. Nakita niya sa di kalayuan ang isang malagong puno ng igos. Nilapitan niya ito upang tingnan kung may bunga. Dahil hindi pa panahon ang igos noon, wala siyang nakita kundi mga dahon lamang. kaya sinabi niya sa puno ng igos, wala nang makakakain pa ng iyong bunga. Ang sinabi yon ay narinig ng kanyang mga alagad. It was not the season for figs. The Bible is very emphatic about that. So, why unreasonably expect to gather fruits? Mark 11:20-21. Kinaumagahan, pagdaan nila ay nakita nilang natuyo ang puno ng igos hanggang sa mga ugat nito. Naalala ni Pedro ang nangyari dito, kaya kanyang sinabi kay Jesus, Guru, Tingnan ninyo, patay na ang puno ng igos na isinumpa ninyo. In the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Now there's a question here, did Jesus really curse the fig tree? Did Jesus really ever curse anything? So, nakikita natin dito that Peter interpreted the act of Jesus as cursing. But the narrator, the storyteller, doesn't tell us that Jesus cursed. The narrator was directly quoting Peter. It was only according to Peter that Jesus cursed. It was only an interpretation of Peter. But we should take note, brothers and sisters, Peter was not always correct. Peter was not always infallible or never wrong. In fact, one time nung sinabihan niya si Jesus na hindi si Jesus dapat magpunta sa Jerusalem dahil mamamatay siya doon, sagot sa kanya ni Jesus sa Matthew 16, 21-23, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. So remember, dinidiscuss natin ito as a side discussion para lang i-discuss kung talaga bang kiners ni Jesus ang puno o interpretation lang yun ni Peter and we're saying si Peter may mga interpretations that Jesus disagreed with because G- Peter naman was not infallible so was the story really about Jesus going hungry unreasonably expecting fruit cursing a tree or is this an all important Jesus lesson on praying Matthew 11 21 to 23 Sumagot si Jesus, Manalig kayo sa Diyos. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Have faith in God as the power, as the giver. Truly I tell you, binigyan pa niya ng emphasis, If anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea. So here the believer, empowered by personal faith, Address the mountain directly and commands the mountain. The believer does not ask God to do it for him or for her. The believer takes command, 
by faith boldly does it. Dapat natin sobrang unawain ito. Nung si Jesus ay nagtuturo kung paano ang dalangin ay natutugon, nagbigay siya ng halimbawa, utusan niyo ang mundok na yan na lumundag siya sa patungang dagat at lulundag siya, hindi niyo sinabing, hingin niyo sa akin na utusan ang mundok. Hingin niyo kung kanikanino na ipanalangin kayo at utusan nila yung mundok. No, sabi niya, utusan niyo directly, personally, yung mundok. At ano ang factor nito? Sa answered prayer. Mark 9:22-23. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Yan ang sabi sa kanya ng ilang humihingi ng kagalingan. Sumagot siya, If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Malinaw na malinaw na itinuturo dito ni Jesus, by faith, yung believer, ang doer, siya ang actor. Hindi mo hinihingi sa Diyos na Diyos, gawin niyo po ito para sa akin. Putusan niyo po ang mundok na tumalon. Sabi ni Jesus, Tell the mountain to lift itself up and jump into the sea. So isang mahalagang factor yan ng prayer. That the doer is the one who is praying. Siya mismo ang actor. Diretso niya by the power given him by his faith or her faith, Uutusan niya yung sakit na umalis Uutusan niya yung halaman na tumubo Uutusan niya ang bagyo na tumigil Tulad ni Jesus, sabi niya, bagyo, tumigil ka Hindi na naman siya nagsabing, Father in heaven, patigilin niyo po ang bagyo Maaaring napakalaking factor ito Sa pag-unawa natin ng powerful prayer Halimbawa, yung babaeng dinutugo Mark 5, 25-34 And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Again, nakikita natin dito yung magandang lihim ng powerful prayer she thought inisip na niya nagagaling na siya hindi niya sinabing baka ako sakaling gumaling hindi niya sinabing hihilingin ko sa kanya na pagalingin niya ako sabi niya mahipo ko lang kahit laylaya ng kanyang damit gagaling na ako she thought she believed she acted by herself She did not ask Jesus to do it for her. Like Jesus directly commanded the fig tree. At pagpapatuloy ng kwento ng babaeng ito, immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, kahit walang permiso, kahit hindi nagsabi, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? So by faith, the believer could operationalize power, realize what is wanted by thinking, believing, already receiving in spirit, in faith, in advance, whatever is asked for. And here could lie the secret to powerful prayer. Isipin Imaginein, paanda rin na sa guni-guni, i-fast forward na yung result ng prayer. Paniwalaan na na ito'y natanggap na. At pagkatapos mong paniwalaan, at saka mo ngayon gawin yung iyong panalangin o gawin yung action. Tulad ng sabi ng babae, mahipo ko lang laylayan ng damit niya, gagaling ako. Patapos niyang isipin yun, naggaling na siya, at saka niya hiniipo yung laylayan. Hindi niya sinabing, hihipuhin ko muna yung laylayan at matingnan ko anong mangyayari. Baka sakali akong gumaling, sabi niya, no, mahipo ko lang, gagaling ako. At dahil naniniwala na ako, nangyari na sa loob ng utak ko, sa puso ko, yung prayer ko, tinanggap ko na, therefore, gagawin ko na yung action. Hihipuhin ko na yung kanyang damit. O, uutusan ko na yung bundok. O, uutusan ko na yung dagat. Pero dapat naniwala na muna siya na magaganap yun. Parang si Jesus, so magpapakain siya ng 5,000 men plus women and children. Diba? Bago niya 
pinagdasal yung pagkain bago niya hinati-hati at i-distribute. Pinaupo na muna ang lahat ng tao, tumpok-tumpok. So, pagpapaupo pa lang ni Jesus, nananalig na siya na dininig na yung kanyang dalangin, talagang natanggap na yung ipapakain. Kaya, pinaupo na niya ng tumpok-tumpok at pagkatapos siya kanya nagdasal at saka niya hinati-hati ang tinapay at saka niya ginawa ang pagdidistribute ng pagkain. Hindi kung kailan nandun na yung pagkain tsaka pala siya nagpatumpok-tumpok ng mga tao. No. Tinanggap na niya sa loob ng kanyang puso, ng kanyang dibdib, yung answered prayer. Yung answer sa prayer. Pagkatapos, tsaka niya ginawa yung actual pananalangin o yung actual nagawa. Sabi ng mga disciples, you see the people crowding against you. And yet you can ask, who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. So you see, the woman did not even have to ask to seek permission. Faith gave her direct access to power. Faith gave her power. At hindi naman katakataka, sabi sa Acts 1.8 ni Jesus, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So tumigil na tayo na kahihingi, 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 kasi ibinigay na. Luke 17.21 Nor will people say, Here it is, there it is, because the kingdom of God is in your midst, or is within you. Nasa dibdib na natin, nasa kalooban na natin, nasa puso na natin ang kaharian ng Diyos, tinanggap na natin ang kapangyarihang ibinigay ng Espiritu Santo, kailangan mo nalang gamitin. Para bang tinuruan ka ng nanay mong manahe, pagkatapos ganyan, meron ka lang ilalagay ng butones, meron ka lang na susulitihin, Meron ka lang ihihilbana. Nanay, nanay, maghilbana na po tayo. Nanay, nanay, tahiin niyo po ito. Sasabihin sa'yo ng nanay mo, di ba tinuruan na kita? Binigyan na kita ng skill? Binigyan na kita ng makina? Nang sinulid ng karayom? Bakit? Ako na naman pinapagawa mo. So nakita natin yung prayer na sabi ni Jesus. Kung naniniwala ka, utusan mo na yung bundok. Huwag mo na padaanin sa akin yan. Huwag mo na iutos sa akin. At huwag mo na iutos kung kanikanino na ipagdasal ka. Do it! Because the power is in you command the mountain, and if you have faith, it will lift itself up into the sea. So, back to the original story of the fig tree. Truly, I tell you, may emphasis ang sinabi natin kanina, if anyone says of this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done to them. Look, huh? and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen it will be done to them maniniwala ka muna na magaganap bago maganap no doubt at heart no doubt kailangan yun ang napakahalagang element ng answered prayer naniniwala ka sa ipinagpe-pray mo naniniwala kang ibibigay in fact, naniniwala kang ibinigay na. Pagkatapos, siya kakapalang gagawa ng formal act of asking or formal ask of commanding the storm, the mountain, ano man yun. Pagkatapos, siya magaganap sa reality, sa physical world, yung nauna nang naganap sa spiritual world. Ano ang nagpaganap doon sa spiritual world? Your faith, your belief. Mark 11.24 Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, past tense, and it will be future yours. Kailangan past tense na muna na niwala ka ng tinanggap mo at saka mo palang actually matatanggap sa physical world. The key is, before the actual receiving, believe that you have already received it then the actual receiving follows. Merong mahalagang question. How to believe that you have already received it? Tito, tito, pastor, pastor, paano po ako maniniwala na natanggap ko na eh hindi ko pa natatanggap? Ano naman ang patunay na naniwala na nga ako? Dahil pag naniwala na ako, tsaka palang mangyayari. So, kailangan talaga maniwala na anak kung nangyayari na. Paano yun? Think. Act. Move. 
live like you already received what you asked for. How would you think, act, move, live if you were already well when you are praying for wellness? Halimbawa, ang panalangin mo, pagalingin ka. Pero di ba ang sabi, paniwalaan mo munang natanggap mo na bago yun mangyayari? So, paano mapapaniwala ang natanggap mo na, nagaling ka na? Paano mo maniniwala na ikaw ay safe na or saved? Abundantly provided for kung yun ang prayer mo. If you were already forgiven, how would you act, move, or live? Kung ang prayer mo is to be successful and fruitful, how would you act, live, and move as successful and fruitful kung di pa nangyayari? Paano ba nagbe-behave kung ikaw ay well, safe, safe, abundantly provided for, forgiven, successful and fruitful? Di ba dapat peaceful, happy, contented, kind, loving, thankful, grateful? Di ba yun dapat ang nangyayari kung talagang natanggap mo na hinihiling mo? Ngayon, paano mo paniniwala ang tinanggap mo na dapat itong behavior na ito, itong mindset na ito, ganun ka na nabubuhay. Na as if tinanggap mo na. Pag nabubuhay ka na, kung may kilos ka na, gumagalaw ka na, as if natanggap mo na, yung peaceful ka na, happy ka na, contented ka na, kind and loving ka na because natanggap mo na yung kindness ng Diyos, thankful ka na and grateful, tsaka palang mangyayari sa physical world. Yung hinihiling mong wellness, safety, abundance, forgiveness, success, fruitfulness. Merong ganong dynamics ang prayer. Kaya maraming prayer para wala nangyayari. Kasi hindi naman naniniwala yung nagpe-pray na tinanggap na niya yung sagot. Ang behavior niya, ang kilos niya, takot pa rin. Ang behavior niya, ang kilos niya, ang damot-damot pa rin niya na parang wala pa siyang tatanggap na maraming pagpapala sa Diyos. So, paano mo patutunayan na naniniwala kang sinagot na ng Diyos yung prayer mo for abundance? Palabigay ka na. Kahit hindi mo pa natatanggap yung actual na binibigay na hinihiling mo. Mabait ka na. Generous ka na. Relax ka na. Tsaka pa lang darating yung actual na sagot. Kailangan mo munang paniwalaan at ang patunay na naniniwala ka ang yung salita, kilos, gawa, lifestyle. E kilo, salita, asal ng tumanggap na ng sagot sa kanyang panalangin. Mark 11.25 And when you start praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in Heaven may forgive you your sins. So ito naman, isang dagdag. So hindi ka lang maniniwala na tinanggap mo na pero pag isang kailangan na gawin mo para talagang matanggap mo, forgive people. Kadugtong to sa teaching ni Jesus about receiving the answer for your prayer. Sabi niya, bigla niyang isiningit ito, kailangan magpatawad ka. At papatawarin ka din ng Ama. At pag pinatawad ka na ng Ama, dahil nagpatawad ka, wala nang bara. At tapos yan, naniniwala ka sa prayer mo. Kumilos ka na, nag-isip ka, asip na tanggap mo na. So, yung dalawang requirement, na meet mo na. Then, mangyayari na sa physical world mo yung ipinag-pray mo. So, para ulitin, ang prayer para tumalab, para mangyari. Paniwalaan mo na na natanggap mo na. Mabuhay ka na, kumilos ka na, na. As if natanggap mo na kasi naniniwala ka na. And it will show in your life. Tapos, nagdagan mo ng kakambal. Magpatawag ka ng lahat ng dapat mong patawarin. Wala na ngayong sagabal para tuloy-tuloy yung ma-deliver sa'yo. Express yung sagot. Yun na ngayon, darating yung sagot. So, ang unang tanong na may meet ba natin yung requirement number one? Naniniwala ba talaga tayo sa prayer natin? At number two, yes, naniwala ka halimbawa, di pa sa sa number one, pinatawag mo na ba lahat ang dapat patawarin? Kasi pag hindi ka pumasa doon, edi hindi pa rin matutupad yung pinapanalangin mo. Ngayon, kahit ang bait-bait mo, patawad ka ng patawad, pero hindi ka naman naniniwala sa pinagpe-pray mo, hindi pa rin yun mangyayari. Very, very interestingly, may introductory story ang story na ito ng fig tree. Bago ikinwento yung tukos sa fig tree, may naunang kwento at ito yon, Mark 11, 1-3. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany 
at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back shortly. Anong kinalaman nito sa istorya ng prayer na introduced by the story ng fig tree? Jesus already believed that the need for a cult had already been answered. Kaya kumpleto na siya with the script. May need sila eh. Kailangan niya ng sasakyan papasok sa Jerusalem. Pero hindi sila nagpray na bigyan niyo po kami ng cult. Alam na ni Jesus, pinaniwalaan na niya na mayroong answered prayer. Na yung prayer niya answered na may cult na kaya ang itinuro na niya sa mga disciples eh anong sasabihin sa may-ari ng cult habang tinatagal nila yung tali at kinukuha nila. Diba? Naniwala na si Jesus sa simula pa lang na yung kailangan ipinrovide na kaya itinuro na niya sa kanyang mga disciples what to say to the owner of the cult. Matthew 7, 7 to 12 Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Here, Jesus reveals another magnet for answered prayer in addition to forgiving others. Sabi niya, so in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Matapos yung sabihin, ask you will receive, seek you will find, knock the door will be open to you, binigyan niya yung secret at paano yung mangyayari, sabi niya ganun, ano man ang gagawin mo, gawin mo sa kapwa mo kung anong gusto mong gawin nila sa'yo. So, ano pang isang secret ng answered prayer? Bukod sa forgiving people, believing in the answer to your prayer, doing good to others. So, yung tatlong yan, pag pinagsama-sama mo, yan ang tinutuntungan ng tripod ng powerful prayer. Faith that you already received what you're asking for. Faith in God, in His generosity, in His kindness, that it will be given. And then, to really live a life as if you already received it, tsaka palang mangyayari. So, faith. And two, forgiving others. And three, doing good to others as much as you would have them do that good to you. John 16.24 Sabi ni Jesus, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. What does it mean to ask in Jesus' name then? Forgiving others, doing good to others, believing that you have already received it and living out that belief. And then actual asking, if you like to ask, or actual command to the item that you want to command, like the bundok. This is the way to answer prayer. Believe that you have received it. The actual act of praying itself is believing. If you are not believing, and then you are praying with your mouth, praying with your mind, praying with any other tool, you are not really praying. You are just uttering words na sinasabi ni Jesus, don't be like the pagans, they think they will be hurt for their many words. I don't want words. I don't want many words. Believe. That is prayer. Forgive. That is prayer. Do good to others. That is prayer. Pag pinagsama-sama mo yung tatlong yun, yun ang itinuturo ni Jesus na susi para bumukas ang pinto ng pagpapala na ating hinihingi, hinahangad, at ating kailangan. Paano natin i-apply ito sa ating buhay? Mag-isip-isip kayo. Pagbulay-bulayan. Huwag dasal ng dasal na hindi ka naman naniniwala sa dasal mo. Sayang ang laway. Huwag salita ng salita. Huwag ra- gawa ng gawa ng kung ano-ano mga posture. Kasi hindi ka naman naniniwala. Sayang. Discipline the mind. Mahalaga yan because our battle is not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers in the air in heavenly realms and that heavenly realms is our mind sa mind mo dapat disiplinado kang maniwala sa ipinagpe-pray mo disiplinado kang maniwala sa Diyos 
hindi ka magduda. Kasi ang nagdududa, walang natatanggap yan wala sa Diyos. Para ka daw na sinisiklot-siklot ng alon kung saan saan ka lang dinadala, wala kang mararating. Kailangan, ang hinihiling, ay yung pinaniniwala ang natanggap na kayang manggapin at kayang ibigay ng Diyos. Without that faith, you're doing an exercise in futility. Sabi ni Jesus, don't be like the pagans. They think they will be heard for their many words. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So, huwag mo gawin yung prayer mo na parang shopping list. But, utusan mo yung gusto mong utusan na yan in the name of Jesus. Maniwala kang yun ay magaganap. Mag-behave ka as if naganap na. Then, forgive others. Then, be nice and good to others. And your prayer will be powerful. Hindi naman kailangan chronological yan na una ka mag maniniwala muna, uutusan mo muna yung bundok o yung sakit o yung kung ano man, tapos tsaka ka pala magpa-forgive. Pwede namang nauna yung forgiveness. Yung forgive ka ng forgive every day, hindi hindi mo na kailangan gawin yung number two. Kasi lagi mo namang ginagawa. Yung lagi kang gumagawa ng mabuti sa kapwa, hindi hindi mo na kailangan gawin pag nagpe-pray ka kasi lagi mo namang ginagawa. Isa na lang natira. Manalig ka sa prayer mo. Sabi ng babae, mahipo ko lang ang dulo ng laylayan niya. Gagaling ako. Ganon ba ang prayer natin? Kasi pag ganon, the power that has already been given by the Holy Spirit, the power that Jesus gives, and the power that the love of the Father through Jesus gives will make the mountain jump to the sea if you would only believe and command it in faith. Pag-isip-isipan kung saan-saan larangan ng buhay natin to i-apply, paano ito mangyayari, and enjoy a new world, a new time of prayer. Prayer that really works. God bless us all.